Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. But today I have a problem. You know, I have this really cool iPhone camera phone thing, and the camera takes pretty nice pictures in really good light, but anytime the light is not so good, the pictures are not so good. And then I have this like awesome Sony RX series camera, it takes really wonderful pictures for a compact camera, almost DSLR-like. But it's kind of a pain if I want to upload something to Facebook or do something else with it because I have to you know, take the card out and put it in the computer and then upload it and everything. If only there was a way that I could fuse these two items together, it would be a perfect world. <gasps> Thank you, disembodied hand. What's this? It's that fake magic wand that I bought from the big theme park for my son. I thought it was outrageously priced at the time, but maybe, just maybe, I'll be able to use it now. Now, what do they say in the movie? It was flip and swish, swish and flip. I can't remember. I think it's swish and flip. <laughs> Holy cow! Convert it into a box. What a chip. Wait a minute. I think there's something in here. What do we have? Paper? More paper? This lens like contraption, which already has attached to it a fiddly thing to attach it to the camera. A little stubby USB cable. One of those wristy thingies. What's this piece of paper? And a substantial price tag. So what am I getting for all this? Let's take a look. Well, I happen to have a magical sheet of information. So, this little unit is basically a camera without a screen and this piece actually attaches i'm not going to do it on screen because i tried it before and it took me forever but there's a battery in here its own little micro sd card and then you have these little somewhat fiddly flippy handles that come out you put them on your camera thusly not too difficult and now i have a super duper camera on my phone and this is going to work with any Android phone or it's going to work with any um, iOS phone that I think um, with some Android phones that have near field communication it's a touch and go with the phones like the iPhone it's a little bit more fiddly you have to connect to an ad hot network and then press the app for the camera and then wait for them to connect and then you're off and running it's not too bad but it's a little fiddly and you can see here some of the features so this has all of the features uh, as far as the internal guts of a sony rx100 II, which is the latest and greatest version of a really awesome camera so what are those features handy sheet first of all it has a one inch sensor that's roughly, when I said here, it's in rate, about six times larger than the sensor in this iPhone 5. Um, so that's a huge, huge sensor. And it's a backlit sensor, which means that they put all the electronic junk on the back of the sensor, leaving more space for the photo sites, which means it's going to be more sensitive and low light. That's awesome. It's 20 megapixels, just like the, its camera brethren. So that's a lot more than you're going to get in the vast majority of phones. It has an ISO range of 160 to 6400, which is pretty cool. It has a real 3.6 optical zoom. So this is not just a digital zoom. It's an optical zoom, and it's a stabilized camera. Um, the 3.6 is roughly a 28 to 100 millimeter equivalent lens. 
So very excellent all-purpose lens. It uses contrast detection for its autofocus and it does have multi-area focusing, face detection, and what's kind of cool is that you can actually press on the back of your phone and it will focus on the point that you press on. So that's really cool. Shutter speed from 4 seconds to 1 2,000th of a second. It's only single shot only. It's not going to do like a burst mode or anything like that. The lens on its wide angle is very fast, 1.8. So that's really, really fast. When you go to the telephoto, it's okay, uh, 4. Point, what do I have here? 4.9, I think. Um, I don't, I can't find it here, but I think it's 4.9. It has very limited manual functioning. So this is probably the biggest drawback uh, of this camera, which could easily be fixed in firmware or just a new app. So uh, where this RX series camera can do all sorts of manual things, the only things manually that this can do is you can shoot in aperture priority, you can adjust the exposure compensation, or the white balance and then you can adjust certain things like the aspect ratio and that sort of thing too but that's it you can't uh, adjust shutter speed you can't adjust iso um, things i think would really make this camera very awesome for the hobbyist it, they just need to update the firmware, maybe have a basic mode and an advanced mode um, and put these in the advanced mode. It also doesn't shoot in RAW. Now that's not a big deal for me, but I know that would be a big deal for some people. So what does it shoot in? It shoots in some of the standard Sony compact camera modes. So it has intelligent auto. That's where it figures out the scene based on just this little smart computer that's inside of here. It has super intelligent auto, which means it takes, takes a burst of several several shots and maybe two shots maybe six shots and that's usually in low light or bad lighting conditions in those situations it will then actually put those shots together to get a sharper and less noise image and that sometimes works really really well this super intelligent auto it has an aperture priority mode it has a program mode which basically just lets you adjust the exposure compensation and that's about it you know, add to that a couple of white balance settings, add to that some aspect ratios, add to that um, a few other things, and that's that. What's really cool, though, is that once it's tethered to your phone, it's going to save the image to its own little micro SD card at full resolution, and then you can tell the software to send a copy of that to the smartphone, either at full resolution or two megapixels, which is typically plenty for like Facebook and that sort of thing, or VGA. So it will be able to send it automatically, and it makes it super easy then to, to send it off to whatever you want. There's also a part in the app where you can automatically just press, you know, like send to Facebook or sent to, to um, uh, an app, let's say if you have some sort of a um, picture app or a photo app, modification app, uh, you can send it directly from the app. And that's pretty convenient too. All right, so what what is missing on this awesome conceptual device? This concept is so awesome. Well, one thing that I think um, that you can't put on here, but you could in future versions, and that would be some sort of a flash. I mean, even some little LEDs that would pop up or something. So many times you need that fill flash. It makes all the difference in the world, or you're just in too dark of a situation, or you need that little pump to get a good focus, um, and it just doesn't have that. And I think it's, it's feasible to put one of those on here. It does have its own battery, by the way, so you're not going to be using up the battery on the cell phone. Um, and it does, of course, connect easily with USB, right here uh, and there's your your little micro SD card it also has a few simple manual controls on the side and a tripod mount on the bottom so I took a lot of pictures with this and I tried to take pictures that would test the camera macro shots low light shots outdoor shots and really bright sunlight um, and in many instances it performed very well in some instances, I thought it could perform better, and I'm going to have a separate video with those shots and some explanations. I also tested it in movie mode. I found that in movie mode, it tended to also perform pretty well. Um, I didn't do any zooming on the test video that I'm going to post because it was a low-light video, um, and I just didn't do any. 
but I have zoomed and you don't get a lot of noise uh, with the zooming so that's pretty good too but the main problem that I had with this camera at least with iOS 7 is it kept on freezing up and in a maybe 35 minute walk that I took around uh, the neighborhood it literally froze up at least five times I had to get out of the app actually double click and, and remove the app from from the uh, processing of the of the smartphone to get back online and that happened I said at least five times when I was on a walk it's happened a couple of times when I was at home taking some shots that should be easily correctable with a app um, like little update uh, also I think Sony was mistaken by not putting in some of these more advanced features for this relatively expensive little gadget and uh, those features are available because it's camera brethren does do those things and even if it doesn't put raw in to put in uh, a more manual modes makes total sense or to even allow us to have various scene modes that we could select makes total sense instead of just relying on the camera. And I would really love to have a flash for, for some of those difficult situations. So based on this, I think it's a really awesome concept. I think it's something that is groundbreaking. And again, my hat's off to Sony for thinking, and my goofy glasses, for thinking of of such a clever idea it is a little bit it is a little bit fiddly to use and uh, but it does work and it does take very good pictures but I think the fact that it was freezing on me was incredibly frustrating um, I don't know how much more convenient it is using this getup than it would be to use a camera that had some sort of Wi-Fi built in um, and that might be a lot faster and easier to use and I just wish they would uh, have more of the um, manual settings in there for people like me that would want to use those settings. Oh, by the way, you can manually focus it with this ring here, but there's no focus peaking. I found it literally impossible to focus, so I, I would say uh, rely on the automatic focus, which is not always as accurate as it would be even on their sister camera. So with that, would I recommend this? I think it's a work in progress. I think if you're a gadget lover, you might love to have this camera just to play around with it. But for right now, I would wait until they upware the, um, the application so it doesn't freeze. Perhaps if you're running iOS 6 or if you're running one of the Android versions, that is not a problem. But it's a problem right now with iOS 7. I'm sure within the next whatever they're going to update it. And then it makes it more desirable. But if they only would have given us back some of those manual modes. Anyways, this is uh, Dr. Mike again, and I'd like to wish you a happy and wonderful day. And um, please give my podcast a listen. It's absolutely free. It's on iTunes. It's called Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. And uh, just find it on iTunes or look under that name or, or Mike Kuna. That's my name. Uh, or uh, check it out on any of their other podcast type of catching sites. Have fun. Oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to make a comment or two about the QX10. That particular uh, camera I did not actually hold and play around with. But just to say that uses a smaller, more traditional compact um, camera size sensor, which is still going to be bigger than most cell phones. And it has a 10x optical zoom, which you're never going to find in a cell phone. Uh, so that might be something to consider. It's a lot less expensive. If you have a cell phone that has a poor camera on it, let's say one of the mid-price Android cam uh, cell phones that typically don't have very good cameras, it might be worth it. So just to mention that, and uh, again, didn't test it, but thought I'd mention it. Bye again.